Okay, thanks for being here. Namo myoho renge kyo. Um, <laughs> I'm going to read this Go Show a lot, I guess. Uh, this is my second attempt at getting uh, the last half of uh, this Go Show, the, uh, the reply to Takahashi. Um, I've been having the weirdest audio difficulties here. Um, completing a video and then listening to my voice going like this instead of sounding normal. I don't know what that is. But evidently unplugging and replugging my, my uh, little Scarlet interface um, seems to correct it. I don't know if it's OBS. Uh, if any of you have any history with uh, uh, this kind of a problem, um, Please give me your advice in the comments. All right, enough of that. Uh, let's go ahead and um, get back to this Go Show. Uh, what's prevalent at the time, uh, in Nitrin's time in Japan, is this uh, adherence to true word teachings. Nitrin's talked a lot about the Nembutsu and the Zen because a lot of the people of Japan that are practicing those um, they're not as numerous as the true word adherents. The true word teachers seem to be excellent salesmen, and they've really uh, gotten the leadership uh, from the emperor to the now shogunate to um, follow their teachings, their anti-Lotus Sutra teachings. Um, and it's, it's difficult to deal with people who've adopted a very deep authoritarian relationship, right? Because authoritarianism isn't just having a dictatorial kind of presence in rulers, emperors, kings, whatever. But it also the, the people are complicit in the authoritarianship because they become accustomed to just taking orders, being told what to do. And that appeals to our samsaric human lazy nature. Um, so they become codependent on that leadership and the leadership becomes drunk with power and this is the history of um, authoritarianship and it leads to things like shogunate then the strongest most military uh, violent minded uh, see an opportunity to easily seize control by simply stating their power and uh, people just cower down and go yes yes we'll do whatever you say it is the disease of authoritarianship uh, Nitrin is dealing with this head on. He's trying to appeal to the top of that uh, pyramid uh, to change their ways because with their change comes the change of the people. Um, but also in the populace, he wants to reach them personally to commit to Lotus Sutra and correct path of Buddhist teachings um, as their modern teacher Nitrin, um, but he's having a, a, a more receptive ear amongst the Nembutsu and the Zen who are already in a position of disagreement with the true word school. So having uh, Nitrin as their influence is very appealing and very uplifting. So he's been concentrating on them a lot uh, personally and spending his energies on the uh, against the true word schools more at the high level of society uh, to influence them in order to get to uh, the populace um, and he's dealing here with a young monk who's very influential in his area who's accepted Nitrin's uh, uh, doctrine of the Lotus Sutra teachings but he Nitrin is also very empathetic to Takahashi because Takahashi himself is not only a follower of Nitrin's uh, or the Lotus Sutra, but he is uh, taking on the mantle of, in his practice to help others uh, move along the Lotus Sutra path and therefore following Nitrin's doctrine. But all of this is kind of done on the down low, right? Because if the shogunate, uh, any of the samurai ruling clan, find out that Nichiren's been to town or Takahashi, he follows that Nichiren guy, 
uh, they'll n have no compunction of just coming over to Takahashi's house and stripping him of his lands, uh, maybe even killing him or his wife and family. Uh, they'll do him great harm. And so Takahashi, as you'll see here, Nichiren is honoring him by saying, it's not only that you're a great follower, uh, your, your, your commitment is beyond just me. This is a commitment that goes beyond this life in our relationship because not only are you practicing Lotus Sutra correctly or uh, Buddhism correctly, but you're teaching others. And this is a very risky thing right now in Japan. Okay, so without any further blah, 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 uh, let's go ahead and read Nichiren's words. As to this matter of the true word school, you may have doubts right? Because you're surrounded by it. So every now and again, you might go, man, am I being smart here? No matter how I explain it in terms of doctrine, it will be difficult to comprehend. Simply understand from the facts before your eyes. So now Nietzsche is going to say, okay, I've explained this many, many ways doctrinally. I can prove easily through the, the, the teachings themselves that the Lotus Sutra is the correct path. But now let's look at the example of recent history in Japan. So you can surmise for yourself, yeah, the true word school is not the way to go, right? So he's going to tell a story of recent history. The retired emperor of Oki was the 82nd sovereign. He reigned for more than 2,000 years after the time of Emperor Jimo, or Jimu. He was the sun god, goddess manifested in human form. Who could venture to oppose such a ruler? So the, what he's saying is the history of the emperor of Oki, his family, his whole emperorship, uh, is an embodiment of the sun goddess, which is what Japan is named after, right? The land of the rising sun, so on and so forth. Moreover, from the time of Emperor Kimei to that of the retired emperor of Oki, the various great doctrines and secret doctrines of Buddhism introduced from China, Pakchi, which is Korea, Sila, and Koguryo, were re revered and preserved at Mount Hei, at Hei or at Toji, at Onjoji, the seven major temples of Nara, and elsewhere throughout Japan. And these were the Tendai teachings of Dengyo, right? Which later became under, or came under the manipulations of priests like Chikaku, who then redirected him to true word school. So you, you should have this history kind of in mind right now. Okay. Um, all this was done to protect the nation and to guard the safety of its ruler, right? This is the relationship between governance and spiritual, mental health, right? Buddhism was very much a part of governance or a way toward good governance. So, very intertwined. The retired Emperor Voki vexed that that power had been seized by Kamakura, enlisted the aid of the high-ranking um, monks of Mount Hiei, Toji, and other temples, and set them to performing rituals for the death of Yoshitoki, the ruling clan of the Kamakura government at the time, moving toward the shogunate, right? The samurai. So might had established itself as the ruling authority rather than the emperor and the familial, uh, blessed, if you will, rulers. It's an obvious uh, outgrowth of authoritarianism, right? Ultimately, authoritarianism, authoritarianism degrades to violence. And it's like whoever has the might will will rule this continued not just for a year or two but years on end the monks praying and or meditating and casting their spells yet the acting administrator yoshitoki never so much as dreamed of what was happening and did not for his part have a, a single ritual uh, conducted perhaps he thought that even if such a ritual was to be performed, it would prove ineffective. In any event, the Son of Heaven was defeated in battle and exiled to this island province of Oki. 
So samurai did away with um, all that incantation stuff, the mudras and mantras, remember, of the true word school. One who becomes a sovereign of Japan embodies the living spirit of the sun goddess. He becomes ruler by virtue of the power of the ten good precepts he has observed in previous existences. How then? Could anyone among the common people of the country possibly overthrow him? Suppose a father is at fault, and his son, who is blameless, hates his guilty father. Even if the father is guilty of some grave error, would heaven ever permit the son to punish him? So this is that filial piety again that gets in the way, but is also very important. It, it holds sway in Japan, certainly. Um, and uh, we see evidence of it throughout Buddhism as well. Then what grave error caused the retired emperor of Oki to meet with this shame? It came about solely because he allied himself with the true word teachers of Japan, who are the deadly enemies of the Lotus Sutra. So even though he had a righteousness to overthrow the shogunate, to maintain rule of Japan, he failed because he was following erroneous doctrine. All the true word monks go through a secret ceremony of atonement, in which pictures of Shakyamuni Buddha and others are painted on an eight-petal lotus and the participants tread on them with their feet. And because those who took part in this bizarre ritual were revered and treated as the supervisors of various temples by the retired emperor of Oki, power passed into the hands of his common subjects, and he met with disgrace in this life. So he lost his Im imbued nature of, of ruling through his the sun goddess, as, it's, uh, as Nichiren is using it as a colloquial example here. Uh, whatever uh, special characteristics the emperor and his family were imbued with were lost because of his misdirected Buddhist practice by these people who would tread on the face of Shakyamuni Buddha, the very founder and creator of the system they professed to practice. <laughs> it's quite a conundrum. Uh, anyway, Nichiren continues. Now this great evil true word doctrine has spread to Kamakura because the shogunate can see the power of such a manipulative practice. It's very authoritarian, right? Deceiving the members of the ruling clan and threatening to bring about the destruction of Japan. This is a matter of the gravest important, uh, import and I have not discussed it even with my disciples. Instead, I have dissembled, pretending in ignorance and filling their ears only with attacks upon the Nembutsu and Zen, because that they can understand and they can ingest. But this authoritarian thing, Nichiren has been reserving his attempts to dissuade and correct that to the top of the pyramid, the ruling people, class, uh, shoguns and so forth, because he knows that the people will follow whatever they're told by this magical thinking, um, authoritarian regime. Uh, and those people are not easily swayed to the correct teachings because they're afraid of the shogunate, the authority, right? But since my admonitions continue to go unheeded without begrudging even my life, I will also tell my disciples what the true situation is. He has no choice. He's been exiled. They've threatened to kill him. He's not changing their minds, so I'm going to work it from the bottom up. I have no choice. Because I have to do this for, for my friends, my fellow Japanese, the nation. It has, to, it has to practice correctly. It has to understand what the correct practice of Buddhism and therefore aligning mind and heart, mind and body, in a positive, life-affirming way. When I do so, they will be even more perplexed, saying that no matter how admirable or worthy of respect Nichiren may be, he can scarcely surpass Chikaku and Kobo. I fear that I will never succeed in banishing all their doubts. How can I dispel them?
When all others hate me, the fact that you have placed even a bit of trust in me, and moreover have come all the way here to visit me, cannot be ascribed to the karma of your present life alone. Surely we must have sh we must share some bond from a previous existence, right? This is how much appreciation Nichiren is now talking to Takahashi with, which, as you'll recall, he hoped to visit personally, but uh, he, he couldn't risk it because this shogun at the would would have maybe beheaded Takahashi or taken away all his land and killed his wife or any any sort of censorship they would have deemed appropriate. Because remember, Takahashi wasn't simply a devotee of uh, the Lotus Sutra and following Nichiren. He was also a teacher teaching the rest of the area. He was very popular. So he would be one to get rid of if you were trying to control the population and scare them into line, if you will. I am much distressed to hear that your illness has become so serious. Uh-oh, something else is in the mix here. So it's not just the Buddhist situation, but this great friend and ally of Nichiren, uh, this lay monk who is a popular teacher in his area, he's fallen ill. And that's, on, a, on top of everything else, that's really something uh, to uh, be concerned about, right? Swords exist to cut down enemies. However, and medicine exists to cure sickness. King Ajatashatru murdered his father and made himself an enemy of the Buddha. But after foul sores broke out all over his body, he converted to the Buddha's teachings and embraced the Lotus Sutra, whereupon his sores healed and he prolonged his life by 40 years. So there's a little bit of um, an implication to Takahashi here that Nichiren has reason to suspect that Takahashi may be experiencing doubts, as he said earlier in the letter. So he's saying, you know, if you let these doubts take hold, they may be supporting this illness that you're suffering. So you really, really have to commit and be resolved to the Lotus Sutra correct practice for yourself and for those you teach. <clears throat> Moreover, he continues, the Lotus Sutra states that the Lotus is, quote, good medicine for the ills of the people of Jampudvipa, end quote. This is Myoho Renge Kyo. The people of this world of Jampudvipa are suffering from illness. All of Japan is. But they have the medicine of the Lotus Sutra, the Myoho Renge Kyo. Are <clears throat> now, in your case, the three requirements are already present. So how could you fail to recover the teaching, the Buddha, and the votary of the Lotus Sutra? Those are the three elements, right? But if you have doubts, I am powerless to help you. Namo myoho renge kyo, namo myoho renge kyo. So now he's making it explicit. He's saying if you want to heal, if you want to live on, stop this illness, then it's time for you to practice correctly. Let go of doubt. Let go of these influences around you that are trying to dissuade you from the correct practice. Commit, resolve yourself to Lotus Sutra, to Myoho Renge Kyo. And as your mind awakens, so too will your body heal because the two are one, right? Please have Kakujobo and Hokibo read this to you from time to time and listen well, listen well, Nichiren. So in case you don't know, Hokibo is a name Nichiren gave to uh, one of his inner circle of disciples, uh, Nico, when he started practicing with Nichiren at the age of 13. So uh, those, those people are in uh, Takahashi's environment. So Nichiren is saying, use them to read this letter to you, knowing full well that not only does he say many things in the letter, but that these uh, very devout um, uh, junior monks practicing directly under Nichiren will have much influence in Takahashi's mind and, um, and help him and his family be protected from the samurai, which would, if they found out what he was doing be um, very threatening 
uh, and uh, just to solidify his practice and and uh, and get rid of his doubts. That's what's eating away at him right now. All right. So that is uh, part two, the uh, end of this Go Show. Thank you so much for being here and participating. Uh, I'm very grateful to your participation. All of my videos, as you should know by now, are transcribed into just audio files. So you can get them on the Buddhahood podcast. That's the name of it. Uh, available wherever you get your podcasts. And if you have time to watch these videos, then again... Uh, I really appreciate your time. Namo Mjolnir and I'll see you in the next one. Take care of yourself.